What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. Now that Arena Breakout Infinite has released on Steam, let's quickly run through the best options to change to maximize your competitive edge and of course, FPS. This quick optimization guide will only focus on the in-game graphics options. To get even more out of your system, check the description down below for related guides. In-game, head across to Settings in the bottom right and we'll start on the Game tab. For a few competitive edges, set your field of view as high as you're comfortable with. While it technically affects performance, the competitive edge is way more important. Default is zero distance should be left at the default, but if you wish you can customize it here. Head shake, always have the set down to low. Extraction point indicator is very useful to have, but when you get used to where things are, it might be worth turning this off simply because people can hide and extra camp behind it, etc. For most players, leaving this on shouldn't really affect anything, but if you find yourself getting extra camped and you're not sure from where, this is an option you can turn off to disable the smoke effect. Auto inspect, right below this, auto inspect valuable supplies is whenever you pick up a red or golden item. I'd recommend turning this off just so that your weapon always stays ready. It just means that you won't hold and show off a statue or anything like that when you pick it up. The border brightness setting is very useful to have and I'd always recommend leaving it on high to highlight any lootables. But of course, when you get more comfortable, you can set it to low or if you'd like a more immersive game, you can set it to disabled. Firing blow, I'd always recommend leaving off. And finally, focal point, you can leave on if you want a really easy way to spot the exact center of your screen. If you're already more than experienced in FPSs, you won't necessarily need this, but sometimes it's nice to have to quickly center yourself on an enemy even before you bring up your scope. The items below mainly have to do with where items are moved to while you're looting, and you can set these as you see fit. Usually the default is more than fine. Same for the HUD area down here. The only thing you might want to change is performance info down here, which when set to always show, has your FPS number, ping, and packet loss written in the top left corner of your screen. Very useful to have, especially while you're changing settings, if you're not running something like MSI Afterburner and River Tuner for an external FPS overlay. Then moving across to the image tab, after we apply our changes, we get to the display settings. Most of these you know already. The screen mode should definitely be set to full screen for the best input latency and performance, but on most modern systems, there's not really a difference between this and windowed full screen. If you find yourself tabbing out a lot to, say, my interactive maps, Discord, and things like that, windowed full screen is the best option here, simply because you can see what's going on in the background, and of course you can tab in very quickly. Overall quality changes the options below, but we'll get through this in just a bit. Max FPS, I have capped to 60, just as I record and things like that. If you have this all the way up, then obviously you'll see much better performance and higher FPS numbers, but if you're recording, streaming, or just trying to watch YouTube or streams in the background and things are lagging, then capping your FPS to slightly below what you're actually getting in game can result in a much less staggery overall system experience. That's usually why I leave this capped to 60, but for testing, I'll crank this all the way up. Usually, whatever your monitor can show is more than enough, but higher does usually mean better input latency, assuming you're actually reaching those frame numbers. VSync always off, enable main screen frame rate limit on, and variable rate shading all on down here. Then, moving down to super sampling, this is upscaling. Usually, I've heard people say DLSS results in some ghosting, and for that reason, either none or AMD FX is preferred in a lot of cases. But if you've used a DLSS replacer to change the version and things like that, DLSS might be a better option for you. Usually, playing around with these to find whatever works best for you is the best option, of course. Usually, I'd recommend if you're using an upscaler, only really go to the quality setting. Anything below this can result in some weird artifacts, glitches, and things like that, making the game slightly less competitive. Frame interpolation or frame generation should always be turned off, and NVIDIA Reflex low latency. If you have this option, I'd recommend setting it to low latency, otherwise enhanced if you've got a really low-powered CPU. This is usually on and on plus boost. Then scrolling down further to the detailed settings, here's where we can get the majority of our performance. Obviously, if you need the best performance, you'd probably be setting everything down to the lowest option, which is basic for pretty much everything. If you can afford higher quality options, then there's a couple of these that are definitely worth raising for a big competitive edge. First of all, view distance, I usually leave it balanced and that's fine. This results in higher LED objects being loaded at a slightly further distance, meaning there's less pop-in 
and things like that. Texture quality is usually a freebie as it only really affects the amount of VRAM used by the game and not necessarily performance. Raising this can result in a big improvement in quality even though there's no real FPS cost as long as you're not asking for more VRAM to be used than you actually have available. If you're running a super low-end GPU, basic or performance is probably all that you can choose here, but if you're running a GPU with around 5 to 6 gigs of VRAM, balanced is perfect, 8 quality, and anything above that maximum is a good choice. Besides that, everything else here I usually leave all the way down as you can see here. Resolution is actually ignored, unless you have your super sampling or upscaling above set to disabled, in which case I'd recommend leaving this probably at maximum, which should be your native resolution, otherwise things will be blurry. I'll save my changes here and head across to the post processing tab where we can adjust brightness. If dark areas are too dark and you can't spot people, raise this option. Saturation is usually nice to push just a little bit to 1.3 or 1.5. Contrast is usually fine wherever it is, and sharpness is usually something Something you'll need to raise depending on what kind of upscaling you're using as that can help unblur certain objects and things like that. 3 is usually fine here. Now as in my previous video, if you're annoyed by vegetation pop in where shadows and things like that change as you scope in and move around, I'd recommend changing your vegetation quality up to quality or balanced just so that there's less of that going on. These options are usually the best here for performance and of course visuals. If I save my changes, enable an FPS graph, and let's get straight into game to see the difference. Obviously testing the shooting range is simple enough, but if you're going to be testing in a more real scenario, COVID Ops is usually the freebie option to choose. Just because simply, you obviously won't be losing anything of value most of the time, unless you happen to spawn with something pretty unique. So it's usually the easiest and best option to choose. Now if OBS starts lagging and you see FPS lag happening, that's just recording lag. The true FPS is shown in the top left in this graph. So popping into game here, performance is fantastic. We're sitting at around 200, which is great. I'm playing at 2K on a 4080 mobile chip. Let's find our way over to a high spot. And I'm pretty sure performance has improved quite drastically since the previous few updates, which is good to see. And while we're running around here, you can see pop-in is barely noticeable. These options look like they should be a higher quality preset, but of course, most of everything is down super low. Visibility is fantastic. So while no spot is going to be perfect, this is a good enough one as any. This is the preset that I've just come up with where everything should be optimized for the best visibility, etc. It should be incredibly easy to spot people, although there's some minor shadow issues happening with lower vegetation and things like that. It's not overall too distracting at all. For comparison, here is the basic graphics preset, which has everything set all the way down to basic. There should be some severe pop in whenever we scope in, things like that. Here is the performance preset. You should see a pretty drastic drop in performance as we do. And of course, pop-in is still quite obviously there. It's actually quite distracting to play the game. And my optimized settings had way better performance than this. Just for comparison's sake, here is balanced. Once again, scoping in and out. Then quality looks a lot better, obviously, but performance is quite a bit worse. Finally, maximum, which cranks everything up. As you can see, we're using around 5.7 gigs of VRAM all the way up versus the basic graphics preset where we're setting around 4.7, which is a pretty big drop. Raising the texture quality to maximum brings us up to 5.2, 5.3. View distance to balance and vegetation to quality. Yep, things are quite a bit better and we're not using anywhere near as much VRAM as the maximum graphics quality. This for me is pretty much perfect. Right now I'm using a DLSS and there's very little smearing, if any at all. Here's AMD FSR set to quality. The previous was DLSS quality. And finally, TSR, which is the other upscaling. This is noticeably blurrier and of course, not the best. I see quite a bit of shimmering and things like that with distant objects, aliasing, etc. And finally, none, which only really relies on the resolution option that we can set down here. So raising this to maximum, we should be playing at native resolution, I'm pretty sure. Although I don't think I see too much of a difference here in terms of performance and looks, which is a little bit odd. But regardless, I still much prefer a DLSS on quality or AMD FSR on quality. Not bad at all. But yeah, that's basically the full optimization guide. If you'd like to explore my community-driven Arena Breakout Infinite Interactive 
interactive maps, as well as other things, you'll find them linked down below, maps.techno.co. Obviously, links to get even more performance out of your system there as well. And finally, thank you all for watching. Mine's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.